Baxter's nerve release for entrapped Baxter's nerve and plantar fasciitis. The incision is made along the medial aspect of the heel, transversing uh, plantarly across the heel, approximately one halfway across the plantar surface of the heel. Blunt dissection is utilized to reach the deep fascia overlying the abductor hallucis muscle belly. The incision is placed directly over the distal tarsal tunnel area and deepened via sharp and blunt dissection. Here, Metzenbaum scissors are utilized to bluntly dissect the tissue. Wheat lanterns are then inserted into the surgical site to expose the area both at the most distal and proximal aspects. The abductor muscle belly is visible beneath the deep fascia. Hemostats are used to elevate the deep fascia off the abductor hallucis muscle belly and to free the tissue. This is a safe method to release the deep fascia without injury to the underlying muscle belly. The flex flexor retinaculum is now coming into vision at the most proximal or aspect of the incision or the, in the area towards the top. A sin retractor is utilized to pull the incision proximally and the flexor retinaculum which overlies the neurovascular component uh, is uh, elevated with a hemostat and then released to perform a distal tarsal tunnel release. And this can be released all the way to the medial malleolus uh, by simply going beneath the skin and tinting the skin with the sin retractor. The venae communicante are visible underlying the deep flexor retinaculum uh, upon release of this area. The abductor hallucis muscle belly is retracted plantarly. The abductor hiatus is identified as the nerve vascular bundle travels beneath the abductor muscle belly. This is separated and protected from the underlying nerve vascular structures and released from the dorsal aspect. The, ab the deep fascia between the quadratus plantae muscle and the abductor hallucis is the structure being released and the nerve vascular structure is beneath the hemostats. Here is a close-up view. You can see the venae communicante which travel around the posterior tibial artery and the nerve is below that. The deep fascia along the more plantar aspect of the abductor hallucis muscle is then released to get beneath the abductor hallucis muscle belly and to identify the deep fascia uh, from the plantar surface between the quadratus plantae and abductor hallucis muscle belly. The abductor hallucis muscle belly is then lifted dorsally with a sin retractor. This is the fibro fatty tissue in the medial interval between the quadratus plant or between the flexor digitorum brevis and abductor hallucis muscle belly. Some of the fibro fatty, fatty tissue is removed with a rongeur to aid in visualization of the area. The plantar fascia is starting to come into view. The medial band of the plantar fascia uh, is between the sin retractors and then where it curves at a 90 degree angle the central band starts to form. This is the, releasing the medial band of the plantar fascia with, sin, uh, with uh, Metzenbaum scissors. This will allow visualization of that deep muscle fascia, or the deep fascia between the quadratus plantae and abductor hallucis muscle belly to uh, complete the release that had been started along the more dorsal surface. Blunt dissection is used at all times in order to protect the underlying neurovascular structures, additionally to prevent muscle injury. Sometimes it is helpful to re-identify the correct level from the dorsal aspect where the previous release had been performed to help locate the planter, uh, the proper planter entry point.
Once the deep bash is visualized, a hemostat is used to elevate it from the underlying neurovascular structures. The deep bash is then released with Metzenbaum scissors to join the previous release from the dorsal surface or called or cephalad surface. This should be a complete release with no constricting tissue overlying the neurovascular structures in this area. The incision is lengthened along the plantar aspect towards the plantar lateral to allow complete visualization of the plantar fascia. Again, blunt dissection through the fibro fatty tissue is utilized to reach the plantar fascia. The Wheatlander retractors are repositioned. Now a plantar fasciectomy will be performed as described by Baxter in his original article to remove a section of plantar fascia of the central band. The medial band has already been released to allow for visualization of the intermuscular sep, deep fascia, fascia between the abductor hallucis muscle belly and quadratus plantae. Approximately a one centimeter section of plantar fascia is then excised from the area, preserving the lateral band of the plantar fascia um, to help prevent lateral column pain, which is of course the most common problem with plantar fascia release. This is, uh, so a section of plantar fascia is being excised with a 15 blade at this point. <laughs> this further helps to decompress the nerve and also helps with the um, relieve the pressure in this area. It's the first branch off the lateral plantar nerve. As you can see, the plantar fascia is being excised from the area. And this is typically sent for pathological examination. Once this is complete, the abductor hallucis muscle belly can be retracted dorsally in the flexor digitorum brevis muscle belly, which is now being retracted laterally to expose the course of the neurovascular structures, including Baxter's nerve. Uh, typically, you, it will be with riding within the fibro fatty tissue that is visible in the, between the two sin retractors. Um, this area is uh, being identified, the nerve is being identified with a pair of pickups. Um, I, use dig, my, uh, I use digital inspection of the area to ensure that there are no uh, constricting tissue uh, uh, about the nerve as it courses from the medial to the plantar surface of the foot. This is part one of two uh, videos.